2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia 2.0. We are going to be doing a oil change service on this. So as demanded, I will go ahead and lead you step by step on how to perform this. So let's get the car up in the air first and we'll go from there. As a tip, I also like to mention that I always remove the oil fill cap before I drain the oil because it allows the oil to come out much faster and smoother. All right, so now that the vehicle is up in the air, we got 19 bolts that we have to take off to get this belly pan here off. Um, we're gonna start with the front ones. They're all T30s. Looks like we're missing one there. Um, and we got three here. Then we got another one here, here, here. And then as well as on the other side. And then we got these two T25s here. Now, if you have a Stelvio, you're also going to have two that are gonna be one here, as well as one on the other side. They're gonna be T25s. But if you have the Julia like this one, you're gonna have 19 bolts total. There's gonna be 17 t30s and two t25s so let's get those off now all right now that we got the belly pan off uh we can go ahead and remove the oil filter which is this guy here and then after we remove the oil filter we can loosen this drain plug which is a 13 millimeter uh head on that drain plug so we'll go ahead and get that off now you can go ahead and loosen this drain plug and drain the oil before you remove the oil filter. Um, but seeing that this is an all wheel drive model, the oil filter tends to sit a little bit higher. If you had the two wheel drive, this oil filter is gonna sit much lower and it's gonna block access to this drain plug here. So um, you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention to that when you go ahead and do your oil change if you're gonna take care of it yourself. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and remove the oil filter and then loosen the drain plug and drain the oil out. All right, so pardon the train in the background. We're going to go ahead and loosen the oil filter here. And get this done with one hand, hopefully. And once we get it loose, you can see the fluid, oil starting to drip out. And then it gets really messy. <laughs> so. Just let it drain, let it do its thing. It'll probably take about 45 seconds to a minute to uh, drain to a uh, drip. And then once you remove the oil filter, that's when it's really gonna come out heavy. So I'll show you that next. All right, so as you can see, it's down to a drip now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. This car is hot, but my hands are used to the hot oils and whatnot from vehicles. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this oil filter now and then you'll see all of the oil come shooting out of it once it's completely out. Here it comes. Voila. And just go ahead and let that drain till it stops. And then we'll go ahead and take off this drain plug next. Alrighty, so it's down to a drip now. I went ahead and uh, loosened up the drain plug. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and remove it and you guys are gonna see what is expected to come out. Which is a whole lot of nasty oil. But that drain, once it's done draining, um, go ahead and put in the drain plug and we'll go ahead and finish off the oil change. Now, some of you may be asking, well, do I have to change the gasket that's on the drain plug? And no, you do not. The drain plug has a gasket on it that does not need to be replaced. Um, it's not like a Toyota or Honda or an Audi or anything like that that requires the replacement of this gasket. So uh, don't worry about it. Uh, if you want to choose to replace the drain plug, it's totally your decision, but you don't have to. 
All right, so now this is where I'm probably gonna get some criticism from certain viewers. Not 100% sure, but anyways, I'll tell you how I do it and you can choose whether or not you would like to do it this way. It's totally up to you. But um, after it's down to a drip, go ahead and reinstall the drain plug. Uh, get the damn thing in there. And once it's in there, take your torque wrench and go ahead and torque it down to 25 foot pounds, which I think is a general mark for any drain plug with an aluminum oil pan. Or uh, what you could do also is just take your ratchet and after it's finger tight, go ahead and just turn it about a quarter till it's snug. You don't have to go jamming down on that thing like it's a freaking lug nut, just tighten it down to where it feels snug. And that's it. Now let's put the oil filter in. Go ahead and prepare the oil filter for insulation by applying clean oil to the rubber gasket. It's on the outside of the filter there. And also go ahead and dump some clean oil into the inside of the oil filter as well to prevent dry startup. You don't have to do this. Um, it is recommended but it's totally your choice uh, when you're doing the oil change. So um, if you don't add oil, it's not a huge deal. If you do, kudos, but in the end, like I said, it's personal preference. So let's go ahead and install this. Installation is pretty straightforward. Go ahead and clean off the mating surface where that rubber gasket goes on the outside here, all around. As you can see, it's nice and clean and shiny. And let's go ahead and pop in the new filter. Spin it on until it's tight or snug, and then just take your hand and turn it until you can't turn it no more. And that's pretty much it. Make sure you wipe down everything so that there's no oil drips. And then we'll go ahead and put the belly pan on and get the car lower back down. All right, we're in the final stretches here. Um, time to add oil. This is the stuff we use here at the dealership. It's Mopar Max Pro Plus 0W30 full synthetic engine oil. You can use whatever brand you want. Again, it's one of those perf personal preference things. Um, but as long as it's 0W30 full synthetic, that's all that matters. And you're going to add five and a half quarts. Do not add more. Do not add less. Add five and a half quarts. I'll show you what the last quart will look like when you add the half, just in case you don't know what it's supposed to look like. Um, but again, 0W30, full synthetic, five and a half quarts. I'll go ahead and add that into here. All right, so we added the five and a half. As you can see, this particular quart here measures in ounces and in milliliters. And as you can see, I got the oil level right here at 16 ounces, which is one pint, and just under 500 milliliters. Please do not add more. Don't take it down to 12 or 8 or 4, because if you do, you will be going to a dealer and they will have to drain some of this oil out, if not re-perform the whole oil change um, just to reset that damn light because that is super annoying. They don't give us dipsticks to read on these cars, the 2.0s anyway, and it's super annoying to have to get that level back into spec because this is such a pain in the butt, but please just add five and a half. Trust me on this. All right, five and a half quarts of oil has been added. Since you have the hood up, just go ahead and go around and check all your fluid levels. Make sure they're within spec. This is your engine coolant system. Um, just make sure it's within the spec, which it looks like it is on this one. On this side, you have your turbocharger cooling system. Make sure it's within spec, which it looks like it is on this one. Um, your washer fluid, I topped this guy's washer fluid off. If you want to check your brake fluid you can it lives underneath this cap uh, most times you don't have to check it just because it's not one of those things that tends to go low unless your brake pads are going low uh, once you're due for brakes 
that's when the level tends to drop because the piston comes out more to compensate for the lack of pad that's there. So once you've checked all that, if everything looks good, then go ahead and start it up. All right, we'll go ahead and start this one up. Go ahead and let it run for about uh, 30 seconds or so. And let all that oil just get up to the top of the engine and circulate. Because that's going to be very important when we go to do the oil change procedure in the scan tool for um, Mopar, or Alpha I should say. Um, because when we do that procedure, it does take a reading of the oil level and it saves it to the system. So I'll go ahead and show you that up next. All right, I'm going to try and run through this pretty quickly because uh, I'm trying to do this with one hand. It's pretty difficult. So um, this is our topology screen that we see when we plug in our scan tool. Uh, it does go up higher, but I'm respecting the customer's um, privacy and I'm not going to let its VIN number be seen. So uh, just give you the rundown of this um, for the most part. So we go to ECM. We go to oil change gives you warnings blah 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 uh, we go to continue now here it tells you um, the oil oil has to be drained the filter has to be replaced engine has to be warmed up and filled with 5.2 liters of oil I know I told you five and a half quarts of oil um, just stick to that and then it says to wait at least five minutes and then the oil level initiation procedure has to be performed, uh, which we already did, technically. Go ahead and hit continue. These are the old values, which is red in milliliters. Go ahead and hit continue. It's gonna tell us to go ahead and turn the key off. Any second now. Once the command has been sent, go ahead and turn the key off and wait for the power latch to switch off delay. So go ahead and hit continue. Turn the key off. Continue. Now this is one of those weird things that uh, is in the software where it has a power latch here. You think it's going to go to 100%, but it only goes to 50 for some reason. And then it tells you to turn the key back on. So let's just wait for that to do its thing here. All right, 50%, turn the key on, like I said. Go ahead and hit continue after you do that. Now it's taking the data from the oil level sensor at this time and it's doing calculations to see how much oil is in the oil pan based on the weight that is presented on top of that sensor. So in a second it's going to display how much oil is in the oil pan by its calculations which isn't always accurate but that's why I always say just fill it with five and a half quarts of oil. You never get it wrong, ever. Uh, so there it is. It's saying that there's 4,779 milliliters worth of oil in there, um, which is in between that range of 3,800 and 5,500 milliliters. And we'll go ahead and hit continue. And that's it for that portion. Now the other portion of this is, uh, give me a second here, I'm gonna try and do this, respecting the customer's privacy, best I can. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit, go over to the IPC, which is your instrument panel cluster. And then this is reset information for the service, service information delete. Hit continue says to run the procedure go ahead and hit continue it's already on continue so we'll hit continue information has been reset 
Then we can go ahead and hit close. It'll rescan the vehicle now. While it's doing that, I'll get this ready to show you guys that the service information has been reset. And now if we look, 9,600 miles, 365 days. And if we start the vehicle, the change engine oil light is no longer on. It's a two-step process. First, you gotta go through the ECM. Second, you gotta go through the IPC. Once you get through those, you're good as gold. And you don't have to worry about this for another year or 9,600 miles.